And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Wednesday, April the 10th, 2024. Interesting. Again, I know I keep always begin my, my updates by saying interesting day. Uh, it was. The PPI came out. The PPI, as they reported, came out hot, which suggests that interest rates are not going to start to be cut anytime soon uh, with interest, with interest, with um, inflation creeping back up and into the picture a little bit. And so the number did produce a, a lower low in the S&P, not in the NASDAQ. And it remained that for the balance of the day. We did not go down and put in a low we got down to 18,053, and that needed to go to 51 and a half, I believe it was. Uh, that was 53.25. This one was the lower one. 51.50 is the low, and it got within two bucks. Yeah, 53.50 was the low today. Now, you would say, oh, that's a new low. No, actually, by the numbers, it isn't. So it leaves open a lot and that the market should come down again if indeed we're going to complete this fourth wave. So here we are sitting inside this thing, which is complex, which is sitting inside this thing, which is even more complex. It's been a long time, if ever, that I, and I've been doing Elliott since 1989, publishing it. So publishing my analysis with Elliott since 1990, 91, somewhere in there. And it's it's really kind of interesting that this type of a difficult count, I ex would expect to see as, as a sign of weakness at the end of a very long move. And that's exactly where it's coming in. But they don't, it's not giving up. There's another portion of this index in the other indexes, i.e. artificial intelligence, which is like continuing to just go, okay, we're going back in over here, we're putting money over here, boom, and then it goes in. And it is due to options flow. I have to be honest with you. You know, I've talked about this before, and I am an ex-market maker, so I traded options. I did that for a living for many years. So now, all of that, it's the changes in the options and it's option flow, it's gamma flow, it's delta flow, it's volatility. And those are all algorithmically controlled and they're followed. So there are a lot of formulas, a lot of, of algorithms that are tied to those uh, indicators. And Elliott continues to work, but it really does come down to pattern pattern recognition. And that's where I'm at with here in the NASDAQ. Here we are in the finishing. It is, in my view, a continuing, developing, um, expanding, expanding diagonal triangle. And under the rules of that expanding diagonal triangle, wave four will overlap wave one. Now it's really kind of coming in. But where I do not, and this is my line in the sand, and it has to be, because then I have no idea what it is, right? Is that it, if it breaks 17,618, that for sure will tell us that this is all over back here. And we are now into that next move down, whether that's going to be a larger primary C, whether it's being just, you know, we will work on that later, but it would give significant strength to the highs absolutely being in. Now, could the market kindly just suddenly drop 500 points tomorrow? Well, depend, but we have been there. We have seen that type of move in the, in the NASDAQ before. So to say it can't happen, no. No, I will not do that. But it's not something that I would be expecting. Now, so again, tomorrow, PPI and jo initial jobless claims, plus a bunch of Fed people out speaking. So we could have depending on what PPI comes in, if it comes in, quote unquote, hotter than the CPI, well, then we get a bigger drop. And, but here are the markers. So we have 18,035, right? That's a new low. And, but 
will it hold? Not if it's doing an A, B, C. No, because look at the way I've got this label now. A, B, C, X, A, B, C, X. So it's a triple A, B, C. Now, I know there's the W, X, Y, Z, and you've got your life and how you want to label that. And I see a Z, and I see a Z, and I see the Y. But I'm not sure on the combination, so I'm doing it the way I knew how. And that's a, it's a triple A, B, C and a fourth wave in a triangle and an expanding diagonal triangle to finish part of a minor fifth wave. So that would also suggest we still have a fifth wave up to do here. And again, even if I start connecting now, we've got a decent size wave one. And so whether or not, if I put that in from here or put it in down here, I, uh, I'll tell you what, I will do it as a, as, oops, as a guesstimate. Because I will connect it as if it comes down to 17,851. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. And that would be really unusual that a fourth wave comes down to 0.786. But then again, it's a triangle. So, and an expanding one. So that maybe is not so bizarre, right? Expanding. So wave four is going to be big, bigger than two, it's not, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it makes wave five to be bigger than three because of the distance it has to cover coming back up. Because we still would look for a wave five to, to make a new high above wave three. Should that occur? I'm laying it out. So if it were to be there, 100% is 18,747. That is a new high. That would be a new high above there. It could finish it. 1.618, 19,303, or anything in between. I got to be honest with you. I think this is the weak link. And once that weakness clicks and goes over into artificial intelligence, not necessarily saying artificial intelligence is a bad thing, or it's not going to be a huge hit, or it's not going to be majorly important as it, in, as you know companies in a in a sector. Um, all of that remains the same, which is time to correct. It's just time to correct. That's it. Time to pull back. Time to reassess value. So, okay. And a lot of it's going to come from the dollar. So that's the other thing. Right? I'm going to add this now. The dollar, the dollar, the dollar. A strong dollar is not necessarily great. It's not necessarily a good thing. It's our cost of goods becomes much, much higher. We become less competitive. So without lower rates... Everybody's going to want to come in and get into our bond. Everybody's going to want a piece of that action. So there's still be a lot of money coming into the system. Because yeah, it's a, it's a vicious circle. But let me say, let let's just leave it to say that the dollar needs to really lower. We need a lower dollar. I think that just kind of makes a big improvement on a lot of different fronts. But it readjusts value. It readjusts fair value on a constant dollar basis, right? So we'll see, we'll see. But I think if it's not a bad move and I do believe the markets need to pull back and then we get to do it all over again. Um, that is have another economic expansion that won't get so pushed when it's at the end. I mean, we, we, we did this great economic expansion. They did save the world, right? First, we had the great financial collapse in 2009. We made, we got a lower interest rates. Everybody got back on their feet. Everything's doing great, blah, blah, blah. We overdid it. And now we're up at a top. And it's like, no, we you want this to continue? Oh, yeah, we've got AI. It's like, no, we need to correct first. We need to, we need to deal with the excess. And then, right? And it goes, it goes a lot further than that. It goes excess at all kinds of levels. I mean, check out what's happening in bigger cities, folks. Check out, well, St. Louis, Missouri. We'll start there. Check out downtown Chicago. Check out San Francisco, the city I live in. Commercial real estate is on the skids. And San Francisco is suffering from the night. We're not getting tourism. And please don't leave me comments about it. Um, but it is affecting. So there are cities that they're watching the overbuilt Part, right they overbuilt in downtown 
They put up too many buildings. They because we're going to have this whole huge run, and that's still going to happen. But not right now. We got a couple of years to kind of finish this correction, make the adjustments, and then and then be ready to go. All right. So for tomorrow, we got these numbers. Here's the deal. If the thing breaks, I think majorly breaks below 17,847, and then again, 17,618, it's all done and the highs are in. And, we're, and this, this all will be figured out. But if I have to follow pattern, this all should be followed by a decent impulse type pattern. And it's going to come in an ABC, believe it or not but more nicely and and built. Like this started, yep, okay, good start. But that takes it all back. And this was not all that strong anyway. So there we are. Uh, moving average is pretty flat on the four hour chart. If I break this down to the 15 minute, let's just take a quick look. How is this looking inside? Look at that. It's a mess. Very, very difficult to trade. This is what happens. Fantastic move if you caught any part of it prior to the opening, you were all set. You were basically done before the day began in terms of making your goal, your profit goal for the day. Very, it was not difficult. And then these moves also did also provide some great moves early, both sides. Both sides were fulfilled uh, easily in terms of. Uh, daily goals. All right. That was the NASDAQ. Let's go over and take a look at the S&P. Okay. The S&P, let me pull this out, go to the four hour. This is really the, the one where I was like, wow, and I needed to make the adjustment to this inter the internal count. And again, it's going to come in here. Now, I'm still in favor of this being a one and this being a two and this being a three and a four and then a five for a wave three. But the wave one, I, I would put much lower. And like that one or three, two or three, three or three, four or three, five or three, three or three. So maybe that, that's why I have to bring it back down so extended the third moved the one down to here and the primary reason was is because of up here even if i put it there and just call this a smaller regular like an abc put the one right there it's overlapped you can see it if you look at my the trend all the line across it overlapped it once twice three times four times five times I'm like, no, 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 no. So this, I moved it, which gives this more room. Because outside of that, this truly does count as three. This truly does count as an A, B, C, three. Ugly, nasty, but fits. So we're likely in a C wave. Now, that was a big drop, 52.85 down to 51.76. So it dropped 110 S&P points, high to low this morning. So could there be one, two, three, and this is a four, we're going to do a five, we're going to come down towards this one, uh, 5145 area, 43 to 45, put a four on it, and then run back up. Now, even then, so that's what I've done. I've put the four here and on a guesstimate, and then marked it against here's the fibs sorry so 100 is 5266 and that now again this is going if we're going to drop to, to 5145 43 in that area first 100 percent, no it would, might be a failure if it was but this 50 5342 1.618 does put in a new high does clean that up and that could finish it. And then we put the five, et cetera, and then we turn. And all of the weaknesses then join together. Um, but this this truly does count cleaner as an A, and it's not done. Now here, here's the other side of the coin. It did make a new high. 
excuse me, it did make a new low. It's been a long day. It did make a new low at 51.76, and that was over the low over there, which was at 51.91. So it made a nice new low. Could that have completed it? Well, it's too difficult to tell. Even if I go down in the 15 minute, you can see it was two, it was 30 minutes, but that was one 15 minute bar that the market dropped from 52.72 to 51.76, excuse me, 76. So that's a very large drop. So could it have been all the way down? It could drop it down to a five minute. We'll go look at that same move. You're going to see it was, this was the silliness of some algorithm getting, yeah, whatever, whatever produced the, the initial reaction just a tad before, a tad before the number hit the tape. Whether it was an initial jobless claim, that came, no, that would be tomorrow. The, the number, the, the CP. The CPI, I'm not sure why, but the, the just before 8.30 a.m., boom, comes this algorithm that got triggered and suddenly runs it up. And then kind of they started to sell it, but then it slowed because the actual number needed to come out. And then it did, and then it was like, get out of the way. <laughs> it just dropped like a stone. In any case, the S&P made it, but I cannot count five waves. And I'm down on a five-minute chart, so I'm not going to go all the way further just to get five waves to say that that was the bottom, and now we just move up. And here's why. Yeah, that was decent, but look what it is. A, B, mm. That's a A, B, C. And this is an A, B, C. And this is a triangle, looks like, right? Ding, 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 ding. So what it should do, flat, rising, and it would be like an E that should should go. And it's not, of course, it's just going to sit. But you can see that, that this is not impulsive. That was, this isn't. So I have to suspect that it's like we got this internal, a one, a two. And we still, or this is a four. We did somehow get a one, two, three out of this. And this is the four. And we come up and we cut one more down. And that puts in, let me go back out to that 15 minute. And then that puts in the, the low back down here. And then that puts in the C wave and the four. And then we do rally. And that would be fitting as to how the, the market actually traded after today. We went down there that we had our, we had the regular opening that pushed it down further. But as I said, in the NASDAQ, NVIDIA started to, to rise and the NASDAQ stopped going down. Fall just started to go up as well. And then eventually other, other component companies started to turn as well because the buyers started to move back into all of them because of ETF or just because of the baskets that were being put through. In any case, so tomorrow we have that CPI number. And I would be, I would be looking for maybe we come up one more time, fifty-two twenty overnight, and we maybe we even start from that point. We get the we get the PPI. I can't imagine that it's going to come in horrendously different than the consumer price index. In fact, I would assume that they're very much in line with each other. So we get a a an initial decline, and then suddenly, okay, that's done. What do we focus on now? Well, we focus on expiration. On Friday, we focus on earnings. We focus on, well, where, where are we going to move money? And we watch that happen. So that's going to be the trick to see where it goes. Let me take this back out to the four-hour chart, and let's talk about briefly the areas where it's like, please don't break. And that would be here. The bottom of wave two, which is at 5,022. And as I said, really what we'd be looking for for this thing to be done is a break below 5,000. A break below 5,000 pretty much seals the deal. And I know from here that, oh, that's, that's a 200 points. It's like, I know that. I'm well aware. And you'd want it, you'd want the information before that. But that may not, that might be how deep it's got to go. 
before you're able to say, okay, we should now work our way lower. And we'll see how far we can go. Because we can work a bunch. There's a whole bunch of fibs that go along with that. But I can't call it yet. I thought I could earlier, but I can't. And I apologize. So we're going to let the market tell us downside. If it comes, it could on the number, if it holds 5140, then maybe look for it to, to bounce and begin to go. And I can put a four in there because we're looking for that A, B, and then the, this could be one, two, three for all we know. Four, we do a quick five down and then rally. If we break there and we break there, they really start to hit the market. Then again, it could be all done right there. I know I've talked about this and I know I keep switching it. They, they're very interchangeable right now. And then this would become one, two, one, two, and we're falling steeply. It would have to be one, two, one, two. And we just start dropping out of the sky. In the NASDAQ, it just is not as clear in terms of being a one, two, one, two because of extreme noise but i would actually would have to be one two one two and we just fall out of bed so we we don't hang out there we come down and we break this so i'm talking about there has to be another severe because what really would be happening here this is the nasdaq again what would be happening here the outside if it's not going to stop here and we go then it's one two three four five and it's like, remember, right? One, two, one, two. So it's minuet three of min minute three. That would be the count. So it's a it's a third, it's a three of a three type of a move. And that should easily kick kick this butt right out the door. So those are the signs. And I'm I'm sorry to say that this is the situation where it's got to come in. It's got to either do it or it doesn't, and it stops, and then we look for that. And both remain still alive. And I hate saying that too. All right. Uh, again, tomorrow, PPI and initial jobless claims, plus three or four different Fed officials out speaking. Next update, Thursday, April the 11th.